let's see how we can use the autolytics snippets to make our coding way more efficient, but also just come up with boilerplate code. Or if you want to get some results, you want to extract variables from the results out of doing predictions, you can just write a few lines or basically just a single line of code and they will be able to help you out understand how the whole autolytics package works. So I'm just putting here, we're going to dive into the documentation. There's a Visual Studio Code extension that you can just go in and download. Also, if you're using cursor and so on, or basically other like distributions of VS Code. So this is pretty awesome. You can just go in and install the extension. It's going to set everything up and then you can start use these snippets directly. So if we start inside the Autolytics documentation, we can see we can go inside our resources and we have the docs. Now let's go inside our integrations. If we scroll a bit further down, we can see we have this VS Code tab. So this is just a Visual Studio Code extension that you're going to download in just a second after we've been going through some of the details we need to know how it works but also what can you do with it then we'll jump into a real world use case and example also how you can install visual studio how you can find the extension and so on but it's pretty straightforward if you're familiar with coding ids vs code and extensions already so some of the features and benefits they have a short example here just showing how fast you can actually get stuff up and running so this is just 20 seconds, you type in the different stuff for the, the snippet. So it could be like autolytics.models and then you'll be able to get code snippets directly, auto completions with what types of models you can use. You can just specify if you want to use the small, medium, nano model. Could be that you get your results variable back after inference. You can then see, okay, what does it actually contain with both the bounding boxes, segmentation mask, classes, and all that. So features and benefit can help you make projects way faster, but also just also understand also Linux faster and extract the variables because it's just a few lines of code that you need to do when you're working with also Linux. So then the hard part or the more complex part is extracting the stuff that you get as the outputs or just setting up the whole solution. Then you can export it and use it in your own applications and projects. So yeah, looking to get started with Autolytics, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very good way, but also just to speed up the development cycle. By VS Code here, you can read more about it, but again, it's a very good code editor where you can go in and do pretty much everything. They have a lot of cool extensions and so on. There's tons of different variations out there. You can use your own personalized one, but it's just cool that you have these extensions that can be um, basically installed from the community. So for installing the extension, you can just go inside the Visual Studio menu and just go into it. If you want to install Visual Studio, just look it up on Google. So you can just search for VS Code this is from Microsoft Visual Studio Code and then choose the operating system that you're on Mac, Intel chip or Apple hardware. You can just take each of these, you can just take whatever of these and then it will download it, set it up automatically and you have your code editor. Once it's up and running, you will get the screen here. So now I'm inside VS Code. Over to the left, we have the extensions. So when you just go up here, we can just search for Autolytics or all the other extensions that we have in VS Code available, but you can just type in Autolytics and it will come up with this snippets. You can uninstall it, you can install it and so on as well in here, and it's just automatically going to set it up under the hood. Down here at the bottom, we can see from Autolytics import, we can specify what classes and so on. So this is a really cool example. This is the same one as from the documentation. You can see the updates, installation, all the methods and so on that you can run through, but I'm going to show you that this is the import stuff that you can do resolve stuff if you want to just extract the information from your predictions and the models if you want to export it if you want to run some of the other foundation models with fast sam mobile sam and so on or the yolo models also what type we have the utilities and also examples but you can find the exact same thing inside the autolytics documentation if you just scroll a bit further down Inside the documentation, you can read more details and so on about it. But at the end of the day, it's just a Visual Studio extension. Definitely go just download it, try it out, and then just like get hands on with it, and you will learn it way faster. If you scroll a bit further down, we can then see the different snippet categories. We have examples, KWARCs, import models, results, and utilities, depending on what you want. If you want to do import different Autolytics objects. If you want to import different types of models that you want to use, you can use your own models and so on as well, or the different examples for update counting systems you want to set up, 
models results sometimes it can be pretty hard to keep an overview over the results how do we extract the bounding boxes the mass class ids confidence scores and all that to use it in your own applications and projects so there's an example here we can pretty much just grab so we just have autolytics.example yolo predict so if i go inside my code editor just going to create a new file let's call it test.py there we go and then if you go back to the example we can just start and type autolytics And then it's going to come up here with these suggestions. You can go through it here, but right now let's just call it ultra done. And then we have example. And this is all the examples that we can run. So we can run YOLO predict at the end, but can use any of these models. And you can see a short example or description on the right side. So let's just grab this one. I just hit enter, selected it. And now it's going to come up with this suggestion. So it's going to set up the boiler code. So from Autolytics, it imports YOLO and assets. I can then create an instance of our model. It just gives me directly the choices, nano, small, medium, large, and extra large. Let's try to go with small. It's going to change that. And it will also set this as default as its source. So we just pull an image for testing it out. Then we just get our result variable here. Once we actually like run into it, could be that you don't know how to extract the bounding boxes. If you're new, familiar, not familiar with Autolytics, how this works and so on, we can then go down and generate a new example. So for example, here, example. Let's go in here again, accelerating documents. So result loop dot result loop. So this is the result loops variable. So this is basically just what we're doing here. We get our bounding box in this way here and our actual data from that. So from our result variable, we can get the boxes, mass, key points, probabilities, and also if you're using oriented bounding boxes. Keyword argument, you can find that. Go through the documentation, see all the different examples that you can use. But could also be, let's try another one. Let's try ultra dot example. Or let's not try examples, but let's try, we have another one. Let's go up here. So instead of examples, let's try results. And let's see that, say that we want to. Um, filter classes or we just want to get like a binary mask or whatever we can also just take the results bounding box x y and the width height or the x y x y top left corner and the bottom right corner take all the data and so on right now i'm just interested in getting the bounding boxes that i can feed into for example opencv rectangle function directly out of the box so right now we run through all our examples. We can also see it give the references. So you can just look it up in the documentation to see what different um, attributes do we have for our result class. So this is the torch tensor array. So we have our result. We do our prediction up here. We get our results with from our inference. And then we look through all the different predictions that we have for that image. This works on a video stream folder of images pre-recorded video, a single image and so on. We have videos covering all the sources, how to run that, even how to train your own models. If you have your own custom trained models, you can just swap out the path here. But yeah, we just have a folder running through all our results. And then we can take our results. This is just a tensor array, but we can extract the specific bounding box. So we have X, Y, X, Y. We can also go down and take the class, for example. So right now I'm just writing class. It's gonna come up with T suggestions. So we can get our class string from our results as well. There we go. This is all the classes that we have inside our um, inside our prediction. So we have a result dot boxes dot class, and then we're going to put it into a list. So it's basically just extracting everything. We can get our names from our model as well. You can also just specify them by your own. This will probably be defined outside the for loop. So this is pretty cool. We can also get the, the confidence score. So let's say conf and we can just grab it here. There we go. And then we can get the confidence sc score. Let's grab the reference. Let's just try to see how that works. Paste it in here. So this will kind of like be the workflow if you run into any errors and so on. So right now we can see inside our result variable, we have our boxes, we have our mass probabilities. Let's say that we're doing update detection, then we will get our boxes. We can then scroll down to our boxes and see that we have this XY and we have our confidence. So this is exactly what we did in here. So here we need to write conf instead of X, Y, X, Y. So this is the whole workflow, how you can use these documentation, use it hand in hand, 
have one documentation page up and running and then use this extension in VS Code if you're using Get Editor or just go in and test it out. It can help you spin up like boiler code way easier. Of course, you need to get familiar with the extension, what it can do and so on. But if you're using Ultralytics a lot, it can save you a ton of time and it's just way easier to work with. You get a better overview. Even I'm using Ultralytics a lot, but sometimes I get stuck or can't remember how to extract like the bounding box or the confidence score if I'm using instant segmentation, update detection or key point detection for post estimation. So this is very important to have all these different tools. We also have the GitHub repo here. If you want to check out all the snippets available, do contributions and so on. You can create a pull request if you have some cool functionality that you want to integrate into it as well. So we see if you just go inside the snippets, we have all our imports, examples, models, results, and so on. If you go inside of them, we can see this is the way that it's structured. So Autolytics predict filter classes. We saw one of those examples. We get a short description at the end, but also the boiler code for the Body. So if you want to create your own, you just need to swap out the body with the code that you want to do and have this prefix set up. Also very important with a short description. So this is going to do also the basic YOLO update detection predict with filter class example. Pretty awesome. Definitely going to check it out. Stay tuned for upcoming videos and then I'll just see you guys in the next one.